preface this first one is very short. Um, Trent Booker was my mother-in-law's accountant, and uh, when it got to the point when she couldn't go in to see him, he went in to see her. Well, she had, unfortunately, a passion for things that were pretty useless, but looked pretty. And she had this chair that was needle-pointed. Well, poor Trent, he grabbed the chair to bend it close to her, and he broke it. <laughs> now, he did have it repaired, and um, when she passed away, we gave him the chair with this little poem. <laughs> Sally's chair. Trent, it is with untold pleasure that I give you this family treasure. May it remind you of a time past when upon the floor you were cast. This object was never made for sitting. For men, it certainly was not fitting. But Sally insisted on having it there for some poor soul who was unaware that it was a trap just waiting to snare the unlucky victim who sat in the chair. <laughs> Most of the poetry, if you want to call it that, that I do, it's people directed. These are odes to people. I don't do just out there about nature or whatever. But anyway, this was one that I wrote to my sister on her 50th birthday, on your golden day. On the 4th of May in the year of 1948, a wee babe was born after a nine months wait. It was with great anticipation and resounding joy that the babe was a girl and not a boy. From the time I could talk and say the word baby, I would beg mom and dad, can we have one, maybe? A big brother was okay, but I needed more, like a little sister to love and adore. That I have done every day for 50 wonderful years, with lots of love and laughter and very few tears. You have brightened and enriched my life from day one, filled my heart with joy and warmth since our sisterhood was begun. I cannot begin to imagine what life would have been for me without my little sister, my best friend, my sweet Susie. I have sometimes wondered, what if you'd been a boy? Another brother, he gets not a thought to enjoy. <laughs> when you were small, I cherished and protected you from life's harm. With your reddish brown blonde hair, such a delight full of charm. Although you could be a pest and get into my stuff, for me it was difficult to punish you or be very tough. Although I miss being there from the time you were 10, once we were both adults, the bonds grew stronger again. The bells have loved us as we have managed to keep them afloat, with our ESP reaching out and touching, if just to emote. Just when you thought your child-rearing days were through, you have been blessed with mom and dad depending on you. I know it has not been easy, and I haven't been able to be there to provide much support and assistance in delivering their care. They didn't know when they had one more to love and cherish. They were raising a nursemaid to attend to their every need and wish. To hurry and scurry from hospitals, doctors, and store after store. Providing them with loving care and ever so much more. As you can see, your birth was quite a treasure. Giving me 50 years of splendor too great to measure. Although you lament the number 50, I wish to say, my love and best wishes for happiness on your golden day. No, I'm not going to read it. I'll try. With such sadness and a very heavy heart, I'm trying to find the right words to impart that might express my feelings for one so dear, who, alas, is no longer on earth, but still very near. With your journalism legacy, you were left behind. Jim, another like you, I doubt we will ever find. One who cared so deeply for his family and community, evidenced by your generosity, enthusiasm, enthusiasm and prolificacy. The vast knowledge stored in your remarkable cerebral trap, always so willing to share it with anyone who wanted to tap. I watched you at meetings taking notes with head bowed. More than once the thought you were napping was echoed aloud. <laughs> when lo and behold, to the amazement of more than a few, every detail word for word, line by line, forth you did spew. You were always thinking about editorials and stories for the next day, even while you were clipping along on the beautiful River Greenway. References have been made to a celestial news banner with you, still cranking out the stories and editorials on all that is new. It is not difficult to imagine you with a pen and a cloud in hand, writing, editorializing, and working at a heavenly newsstand. 
You have honored your family, church, community, and country as a man of principle, deep faith, and a role model for all to see. In the tradition of our beloved DePaul University, I raise my voice on high and sing your praises, Jim, throughout the land and to the sky. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. 